guys, and welcome back. On this week's show, part two of our wooden plane build. Well, on last week's show, we made some great progress with getting the core of the plane body done, uh, as well as getting the sides glued in place. So the first thing that we want to do this morning is we want to unclamp it and uh, see where our imperfections lie at this point in time. Well, the plane body is looking good. We've got it unclamped. All the glue is perfectly dried. Um, what I've got here is a piece of sandpaper and I've used spray adhesive and mounted it to a piece of three quarter inch MDF. And our next step with this project is we want to flatten the sole of this plane. We want to get this nice and perfectly flat because of course you don't want this all bumpy or, or uh, having rough edges or anything for when you're actually working with the tool. So let's flatten the sole of the plane. Well, once you get the sole flattened, you want to take a good uh, straight edge and just place it corner to corner and test to make sure that it is perfectly flat all the way along because there's nothing worse than a plane that doesn't have a flat sole. Um, we now want to drill the hole for the cross pin that's going to assist in holding the blade in place. So <clears throat> we're going to take it over to the bench and do a little more layout. So we need to drill the hole for the brass cross pin that goes in this and it's going to be a quarter inch diameter. The hole needs to be positioned from the very tip of this 45 that we cut in this mouth opening. You remember that? We cut that 45 degree angle right here in this core piece. Well, from the chisel point of that, we need to measure back 5 eighths of an inch. And once we get that 5 eighths of an inch mark, we're going to place another mark at an inch and a half up from the base or from the sole. So 5, eighth, five eighths of an inch back from the tip of this mouth opening and an inch and a half up from the sole, we're going to drill a hole there. You just want to be very sure that you're making accurate measurements here. So don't drill anything before you double check all of your measurements. And that's our mark 5 eighths of an inch. And like I said, one and a half from the bottom. Just like that. So now it's time to drill the quarter inch hole but you want to prevent tear out. So I'll show you a little trick to prevent that. You remember that little wedge that we saved from our off cut? Uh, we used it to block up our piece to get some flat uh, holes drilled in this face of the 45. Take that piece and very carefully wedge it back down into this hole and leave it in there while drilling. And by drilling through this block of maple that's there, you will get zero tear out um, through the inside pieces of your body. So a quarter inch diameter through hole right through both sides. The cross print pin hole is drilled and we can remove this block here that served its purpose rather well. Um, absolutely zero tear out on the inside edges here and the hole looks nice and clean. Uh, it's exactly what we want. Now, this is kind of where you get some artistic license. And uh, what we need to do is shape this plane 
to uh, whatever kind of design that we wish. So I can't tell you how to do yours, but what I can tell you is when you're shaping this, do not get any closer than a quarter of an inch to the top of this pole down or hole down from the top. You do not want this splitting out. Um, so I'm going to draw out a profile here. I'm not quite sure exactly what it is that I want to do, but we're going to draw it out and uh, I'll show you what I have come up with when I'm uh, done sketching it sort of thing. Well, I've drawn out my profiles and you have to remember this is multi-side shaping. So I want this front face curved as well. I want the back end curved and the side profile that I've come up with looks something like this. You can see I took a couple shots at it and scribbled out the ones that I didn't think looked quite right. And that's okay. Take as many tries as you want. Um, the next step now is I'm going to take this to the bandsaw, I'm going to rough cut it and then uh, over to the spindle sander and the disc sander and the belt sander etc etc and uh, get this shape down to its final uh, uh, usable shape. So um, I don't know, do you need a video of that? Probably not. So uh, I'll see you when this is all shaped up. Well once you're done shaping uh, your plane, you want to give it a really thorough sanding all over. Something to keep in mind, be careful with planing the sole. You don't want to take away that flatness that you work to achieve. You also don't want to take away this crisp edge around the bottom of the sole. I would leave that intact. However, everything else here, I would make sure that the edges are nice. Um, Take away that sharp edge. Maple can give you a nasty slit on your fingers. Uh, make sure that it feels good in your hand. Kind of go through some mock planings. If it doesn't feel good, change the shape until it does or, you know, round it off. Find out what doesn't feel good. Is it putting sharp pressure on the palm of your hand? Round that edge a bit more. Um, I'm quite pleased with the shape of this one. And now that we've got the shape done, the final sanding, all that jazz on this piece, we can put it aside because now it's time to make the lever cap. Well, in order to make the lever cap, you're going to need some 3 8 of an inch thick stock. So I've got this piece of 3 8 curly maple. It's a cut off from uh, making the uh, core and the body of the plane. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rip this to a width of one and five-eighths of an inch. Well, I've squared off the end as well as cutting this at one and five-eighths of an inch um, thick. But what we need to do is I'm going to draw a line here as a reference um, at one sixteenth of an inch and this is the amount of material that I need to leave after I cut a bevel and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a 30 degree bevel in the top face of this particular lever cap. Now <clears throat> there's many methods you could do it whatever you're comfortable with. Um, I'm going to see how the setup is on the table saw and if I'm comfortable with that setup, then I'll cut it like that. If not, um, I may just end up marking it out and doing it on the disc sander using some blocks to keep this square to the table. I'm going to set it up and uh, let's see how it goes. I ran a couple dry runs without the blade up to sort of see where my hands would be and actually I was fairly confident with that uh, run. I don't know if you can see in the shot um, I used a clamp to help hold it to the fence. The fence was actually set at a 60 degree bevel and when you're cutting at that kind of a bevel it really wants to pull that wood away from the fence and kind of suck it into the blade. So. Use something like a clamp to help you hold it. Don't rely on just your hands. You want to be able to concentrate on where your hands are, not on necessarily holding that wood tight. 
Um, now that we have that 30 degree bevel cut with that 1 16th thick edge here, we're going to cut it to its final length, which will be three and a half inches long. Well, now that we've got it cut to length, we need to measure 2 and 15 sixteenths of an inch up from the bevel and we're going to drill a hole here, 3 eighths of an inch in diameter. Um, this will be for more hardware. As well, you can see here that I've marked some radiuses on the top corners. We're going to take that over to the scroll saw, trim that off and then just sand it up just to make it a little more um, as I like to say, aesthetically pleasing. I really don't want these sharp edges here, so we're just going to round those off. And uh, once I get that 3 8 hole drilled and get that rounded off, um, we'll come back and start assembling this plane. Well, the body is done, the lever cap is done, and now it's time for assembly. And the first thing we want to do is put in our brass cross pin. Now, I've used some Autosol polish to give this uh, a bit of a shine and it also puts a nice protective coating on it. You don't have to, I mean you can use it however you like. It's a tight fitting uh, installation for this pin but it is not impossible. I mean you shouldn't have to pound it in. If you saw right there I just pushed it in with my fingers and it fits in there quite nicely. The next step in the process is you want to install the adjuster cup that came with the kit. And that's the one, if you remember, that we drilled out the 7 8 diameter hole for. So that will sit in its place and uh, using a slot driver, not a big fan of the slot driver in this kit, I gotta say, um, but hey, can't be picky when it comes to this, right? Uh, but using your supplied screw that they, uh, they give you here, install this cup into its uh, final home here in the 7 8 diameter hole. just like that. The next step in assembling the plane is putting your bevel adjustment uh, into the cup and you'll see that on this particular piece there's one section that protrudes much further down. That's the section that goes into the cup and you want to make sure that this little pin here points upwards. So just sit that into its position just like that. Now that we have that mechanism in place, we can place our blade in here and these holes of the blade will coincide with um, that little pin that we had sticking up there from before. Now you can see here as I turn this, uh, the blade is adjusting from side to side. And now the next part is to install our lever cap. But the first thing we need to do is there's a brass insert here that will need to get pressed into the back of our lever cap. Our lever cap will go into place just like this. If it doesn't fit or if it doesn't go in easily, mine's a little tight here, don't really like that, we're going to sand this down until it fits easily. So before I carry on with the installation, I'm going to give that a sanding. Well, the lever cap has been sanded off and it now slides rather nicely in here. So just like before, put your brass insert in the back, slide your lever cap into place. And once you get it in place the way you want it, this little assembly here goes in, little brass turn screw will go in to tighten your blade and hold it in place with the lever cap, just like so. And now that we have the plane assembled, let's just take it for a test spin just to see how it goes. Now that's a pretty thick ribbon there, but it works just great. Feels good. 
Uh, not bad for an initial test. I will be, this is only pine of course, and it's still just the factory grind on this blade. But for the initial uh, run for the test, I'm quite pleased. A few adjustments of the blade and uh, this thing will be ready to, uh, to go in the shop. Uh, quite impressed. I really like it. And there you have it. A wooden plane. Um, guys, this particular project, um, even though it was from a kit, don't discount it. Uh, I mean, don't write it off as saying it's cheating or it's cheap or whatever. It's got some really nice quality parts and the price point on it isn't that bad. I think it was like 70 bucks and that's for the blade, the hardware, the adjustment, it's all the stuff. The only thing it didn't include was the wood. When you compare that with a uh, Veritas smoothing plane um, where it has the cast iron sole and the whole nine yards, the price difference is huge. And there is nothing more satisfying in the shop than making your own tools, especially one as useful as this and one that works as well as this. So really, you might want to consider it. Um, I've said before, adding things to birthday wish lists and that sort of thing. It's a great little kit. I mean, uh, I'm quite pleased with it. I'm going to throw a couple uh, coats of shellac on this to finish it off once I finish with the sanding. That'll really make that curly maple pop out. And um, who knows? I mean, I think the longevity of this particular plane uh, is going to be good. And if not, if the body gets banged up or beat up beyond a usable state, make a new body. Like, it's not that difficult. You drop a wooden plane on the floor of the shop and it gets damaged or destroyed, you make a new body for it. You drop a cast iron one and then you're into quite a repair job. Um, great little project. A couple things I want to point out to you. When you're making something like this, especially when you're making something like tools, you want to be sure that you have a few things. And one is a good straight edge. You want to be able to check your stock for flatness. You want to make sure that the sole of that plane is nice and flat, nice and smooth. That's what gives it the, the plane its usefulness. Without that bottom reference of it sliding along the wood, it really doesn't have anywhere to, uh, to get that straight flat surface from. The sole has to be flat and you need to check that with a straight edge. Another thing, good trusting or squares that you trust, both in 45 and at 90 degrees, you're going to need them for this project um, to check your angles of setup. Double check measurements, make sure everything's good before you uh, drill, before you cut, etc, etc. That should be standard in your shop anyway. Um, and the last thing you want to be sure of is Guys, check your tools. Make sure that that table saw blade is 90 degrees to the bed. Make sure that um, if you're using a jointer, make sure that your fence is 90 degrees to the in and feed and out feed tables. Um, using your bandsaw, your sanders, make sure that they're running true. Make sure that your blade is square to your table. Make sure that your sanding belt or your disc is square to the table. If they're not, all you're going to do is duplicate that imperfection onto your project and it just snowballs from there. Setup is key. Guys, this is a foolproof project and it was a heck of a lot of fun. Truth be told, it took me two days to make it. But two days, very well spent, very enjoyable. I loved it. Uh, Veritas Lee Valley does offer a bench plane kit. Um, which, you know, I've had so much fun with this, I really think I'm going to pick one up and uh, make that and add it to my plane arsenal. It's a great project. Why would you not want to do it? Guys, I want to thank you for watching again this week, and I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'm going to see you again next week with yet another woodworking video.